Welcome back, everyone. Since this morning, you've all been incredibly busy. Uh, several of you have signed up for our listserv to get the automatic notifications for when a new version of our software is available. That's good news that you can that you look forward to, and I'm going to tell you that Jason's going to be asking you to do that for ASWIFT this afternoon as well. For those of you that are new, you should also sign up for our monthly newsletters that go out the middle of each month. They contain a lot of tips and tricks and information on the new software releases. Just drop me a note in the chat box that says new letters, newsletters, and I'll be glad to add you. I also want to remind you, in case you didn't get time to read the email with tips for participating or maybe browse the sessions in full, that the outlines and the PowerPoint presentations are available on our website. I'm going to this screen over so you can see that. You are able to view the session outlines and download the PowerPoints from this site. So if you want to take a look at those things or print them and have them available during the sessions, you can do that. Each of you that are joining this session are going to be signed up. You have a chance to win this little book called The Shark and the Goldfish. It's all about maneuvering um, difficult times, which seems to be pretty appropriate for now. I wish you could take a book of your choice and walk over to Forsyth Park and enjoy some quiet time. But we'll send you a book, and perhaps you can enjoy something on the patio or a park of your choice if and when those open. So I am going to introduce you now to Amy, who's joining us from South Carolina. Amy, I'm going to bring up the webcam. We have Amy with us. She's been working from home, like all of you. Mm -hmm. And we have been partners with Amy and Tri-County for over 20 years now. But really, with try, only about three years, I think, with you, Amy, that we partnered directly with you in your role of operations manager for the right. corporate and community education division. Mm -hmm. Like I said, she works as the operations manager, and this division sees about 10,000 students annually, and ACEWARE stays active in supporting their registrations, their payments, and their reporting needs. And even at times, Amy, I believe that Matthew, your tech, has been called in to sit on, on some of your ACEWARE meetings, your user yes. meetings, yes. To, yes. to talk about ways to streamline things. Mm -hmm. And so you have a strong unit, and contributing to that strength and efficiency are your standard operating procedures, mm -hmm. which you are here to talk about. And I'm excited that she's going to share these procedures and processes with you. Amy, I'm going to turn over controls to you, and I'll let, okay. you, let you know when I see your screen. And Amy wants you all to be active in this session and ask questions along the way, and I'll get those to her to answer. We're seeing your screen now, Amy. And so with that, Amy, I'm going to go quiet. I'm going to take us both off webcams and turn things over to you. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. Okay, Amy, all yours. Okay, let me get my PowerPoint going. Can everybody see the PowerPoint? I'm seeing you just fine. Okay, okay. And you can, okay. Um, well, to give a little bit of history, Sharon's already talked uh, a little bit about our relationship with ACEWARE. Um, again, Tri-County's uh, relationship with ACEWARE goes back several uh, years, in fact, some uh, almost three decades. Um, we use um, student manager in our corporate and community education division, um, and the student manager plays a huge role and the success of our programs. Um, I, a little bit about me, I have been with Tri-County for about um, not quite three years. I've uh, been in higher education for over 20 years, however, and while I worked in different um, positions and different roles throughout those years, I was always working with some sort of academic software for credit programs, and when I came to Tri-County, 
uh, in the Corporate and Community Education Division, it was a little bit different for me to get used to working with non-credit programs. And I wasn't sure how that was gonna work, but it didn't take me long to realize just how well um, a student manager does in um, helping our success for both our students and our, our programs. Um, to give a little bit of detail about our division, again, we are our separate entity within Tri-County College. We have our own, um, I guess you could say, our own headquarters, our own building. Um, and we, within our division, we have five separate departments. Um, we've got the Transportation Division, uh, which includes uh, CDL, A and B, um, also heavy equipment, and uh, we have recently started a power lineman program. So those programs fall under uh, that department. We've also got SCDOT, which is South Carolina Department of Transportation. Within that department, we have um, highway construction um, and things like that. Uh, we've got a healthcare department which covers anywhere from uh, EMT, CPR, uh, CNA, nurse aid, um, and other areas like that. Um, we have a manufacturing division or department um, where uh, students can get certified for CNA, I mean CNC, um, mechatronics, and other programs. And then we've got a business division that is kind of a catch-all it covers several different areas, um, anywhere from real estate to tax preparation to photography, forklift, things like that. So within our um, division itself, we've got five little separate divisions. Um, and within each department, there's a program head or department head as well as a training coordinator. Um, the training coordinator is, is probably the one who does the most work with um, with student manager. They're the ones who build the classes, they register the students, make the schedule, provide the rosters for the instructors, they run the reports, print certificates um, when necessary, and, and really hands-on into student manager every day. Um, we also have a like a front office department, customer resource center. Um, we have two ladies that are in our front office all the time. Um, they're the ones that are the, the faces and the voices of our division. Um, when a student calls or walk in the door, um, they're the first people they see or talk to. And they can give out general information uh, about the programs. In some cases, they actually register students for programs. They also, um, from time to time, print certificates if needed. They, they act like registrars, you know, in some cases by running transcripts and things like that. So they are also heavily involved in student manager. And each department is different. Um, the requirements for each program is different. Um, but the way we do things and the procedures are all very similar. Um, and having the standard operating procedures um, for these processes, it, give, it it's helpful in many ways. Now, I wasn't around when they started developing these standard operating procedures. Um, that was before I got there, and I'm thankful that um, it was already in place when I got there because I know it was very it was a painstaking process, but has, it has paid off over and over again um, with the benefits that have come with having it in place. One of the, one of the reasons that they, um, they decided to do this was we are a department that runs at a very fast pace. And for, for some people, it's a little too much. And we went through a period where we had a lot of turnover. Um, there were people that retired, uh, people relocated, and then some people just did not like the fast-paced environment. Um, it's like, you know, Sharon said, we, we see anywhere uh, upwards of 10,000 students that come through our programs a year, and it never stops. It's ongoing. So um, 
it's a it's a very fast paced environment. So you know, some people like it, some people hate it, and it it there was a time there where we had several people that that uh, for whatever reason left our division. Um, with the the standard operating procedures, whenever someone leaves, um, all that since all the procedures and processes are basically the same, even though the department's different. Um, the, the training coordinators can fill in for one another um, and for our customer service center. Um, it's been very valuable at times when we have had turnover um, for whatever reason, uh, because in, in the fast paced environment that we're in, if we get behind, it snowballs very quickly. And in this case, someone leaves, we have somebody else there that can step in and cover until we can get a new hire in. With the standard operating procedures, when we have turnover and when we have someone that comes in to replace uh, the person leaving, um, new faces mean new training. Um, and new training means new opportunities for things to be forgotten or left out. So with the standard operating procedures that we have stored on our shared drive, it allows all the employees access to all of the procedures. Not only they have the directions, but they also have screenshots. Now, when a person comes on board with us, we certainly sit down with them and have somebody training them one-on-one -on -one, um, for at least a couple of weeks. But again, that person has work to do, the trainer, so at some point they have to leave the trainee to, to, I guess, fend for themselves or to be on their own. And so when that happens, of course, there are, are people in the, the division that they can still ask questions and um, if they have problems, but they have those standard operating procedures, um, those documents that they can get to at any time. Um, that will help them, you know, remember what they learned or or help them get through a, pro a process that they're doing. Some of our training coordinators have even gone as far as to print out um, the the documents that we have on our shared drive um, for the operating procedures. And then that way they, they put them in a notebook and they have them at their fingertips, um, you know, so they can pass that off to the, the new employee and the employee has it. That was my case when I came on board at Tri-County. When I started out as a training coordinator and the lady who had worked in the position before me had created this Bible of all of the standard operating procedures and things that, that I would need on a day-to-day -day basis. And it was great because, you know, at the time when I first came on, I didn't, I didn't have somebody immediately to train me um, to, to find out where the documents were online, but I had that book that I could turn to. So between the documents on the shared drive and the book, it was it was great for me. So that's something some of the trainers, training coordinators do to have on hand. Um, one of the, the reasons that we do have the um, the standard operating procedures is the um, external reporting and funding. Uh, we have, um, we get funding from the state every year and it's based on data that we provide. Um, before we had the standard operating procedures, we would run the report and we would have pages and pages of errors um, that had to be corrected. A lot of that had to do with data integrity, um, a, lot, a lot of it had to do with different people doing things different ways as far as building classes or um, entering a, a student's grades, things like that. So since implementing the standard operating procedures, our state reporting era, errors have dra dropped dra drastically. Um, and so this saves us in time and money. It saves us um, you know, time for somebody taken away from the work that they would normally be doing to have to fix errors. And it also saves us money in the fact that we don't have any downtime for our day-to-day -day operations. Also, act, providing accurate data to the state 
um, it maximizes our state funding received. Uh, since since we've implemented this, the standard operating procedures, again, our reports have gotten cleaner and cleaner to the point that we, we don't have any errors. So that means we can return the data quicker and expedite our chances of getting um, funding. And um, I guess the, you know, it's first come first serve, so that helps us out greatly. Something else that we work with um, in the corporate community aid division is grants. Um, we also get grants from time to time, um, depending on the type of grant, the type of program. Um, and it's different amounts of money depending on the program, but each grant re requires us to provide um, data reporting, I guess, to prove that we're using the, the grant money responsibly. Most of the time, they want to know how many students have completed the program. And these are normally in, in quarterly reports, um, but we have to report how many have completed, um, what type of national or state certification was received through that program, um, if they got employed, and um, if they got a raise. A lot of times the grant funding is based on whether or not the student will, will get a raise in pay if they're an incumbent worker. Um, and these are things we can all enter into student manager and then extract in a report that we can submit that will show the this information. And um, Matthew's been great to work with us on building reports for different types of grants that that helps us, you know, extract specific data depending on what that that grant agency is asking for. But that that's given this or with student manager giving those us those options to be able to enter that data and pull it. It helps us getting um, more money each time we apply for a grant. Um, the standard operating procedures for collecting and recording this information, it helps us with efficient reporting on the current grants. It helps us get a better, have a better chance at receiving future grants um, by including the data in our future proposals. And then it also helps us from a marketing standpoint that we can use that information to show potential students um, what we've done in the past and how we've helped students get uh, funding for their programs and help them get a certification and then get a, a, get a job after they've completed um, the program. Another way that the standard operating procedures um, help us is internal data. Um, we, you know, each department head has to determine the efficiency of their programs on a year to year basis and how much is it worth to continue doing certain programs or the possibility of adding new programs. And one of the example we had with the standard operating procedures helping us was that we had a department head look at all the pass rates of, of um, the national certification exam for a certain instructor. Um, well, actually she did it for all of her instructors, but the ones that were, the instructors that were excelling in getting the, their students, you know, certified, she used them to be able to help train the instructors that were not having the best pass rates and certification rates for their students. Um, and this was done by looking at data that was entered into student manager based on the standard operating procedures. Um, she had some instructors that, that rejected uh, the training and did not want to be trained, so she let them go because it was important to her and it's important to our division as a whole that our students are, you know, are given every opportunity they can to be successful, including getting the national certification. We want them to, to get what they need to be able to get out and get a job when they finish the program. Another example of using SOPs for internal data uh, auditing 
is um, we had a request of an external certified agency for um, customized data collection. Um, and it allowed one department to examine the distribution of numeric grades rather than just the pass fail rate. Um, so the data for recertification students was compared to that of initial uh, certification students. And this data allowed for better program evaluation prior to updating curriculum and tests. So in other words, the, the department head in this case determined or helped determine um, if the program was doing what it needed to do and, and, and by using a different grading system, was it um, maximizing you know, the potential for the program? Um, and it, it was able to evaluate to determine if changes needed to be made to the curriculum um, and their testing. So how do we do it? We have a shared network drive uh, within the division like most places do. And every person within the division has access to that, to that network drive. And not everybody uses it. They all have access if they need it. Um, and when the SMP team started um, working on the getting these procedures to get together, um, it wasn't easy, of course, and it did take some time, um, lots of trial and error. But you know, you, they started out with the procedures that they did the most and that they did on a daily basis and um, really worked hard to develop and organize and an easy to understand manual. And so it were, for every major process and procedure um, that any of our employees could possibly need you know, on any given day, they have access to a guide for that. So. Each procedure has been documented and it's been put on that shared drive and then they're organized by how, what the function is of that employee. So training coordinators don't have to dig through all of the other um, manuals to find what they're looking for. They can go directly to uh, their own personal section and, and I'll show you that in just a minute. As you can see, the, um, the folders are um, labeled by the, the duties or the type of work needed um, as far as um, the role of the employee business office. We've got the common data requirements, the customer resource center. We've also got a um, folder just for level six users, um, program managers and training coordinators, as well as some other things. And this was actually, this particular uh, group of guides uh, was built in 2018, it was updated then. But as you can see, we have updated it, um, the individual documents since then. So it's in one place. And so anytime somebody needs to, to make changes or updates, they can go to this one place and, and find what they're looking for and either change it or print it or, or whatever they need for it. So for each area that uses the student manager, again, there's a folder for it. And so each process for each area is in that appropriate folder. The common data requirements folder is used by everyone because just about everybody at some point is gonna be entering data. And data integrity is obviously very important. So it's very important that everybody who makes any kind of input into student manager is doing it consistent with the way that others are, are doing it. And when somebody comes on board at Tri-County within our division, obviously part of the training process is showing them where the shared drive is and how to, how to find what they're looking for in the guides. And again, you know, the good thing about it is that, you know, it may be a month down the line and something comes up and they, they forget how to to get the information they need. They can ask anybody in the division. They, they can show them where to get it. By clicking on the appropriate folder, a uh, user can find a manual for any procedure that they're looking for. And as you can see, we this is the training coordinators folder. And as you can see, we've got all kinds of things in there that a training coordinator is gonna need on any given day, anywhere from an instructor to cloning a course, um, how to run a quick report, refunding, um, 
things like that. And then of course, we've got a table of contents down here at the bottom they click on and it uh, gives them more uh, information as well. We've tried to make it as simple as possible and as easy to find. Um, obviously, there are a few clicks that you have to do to, to, to get to what you're needing, but we've tried to make it as simple as we possibly can. And if you drill down into one of our uh, guides, you'll see a detailed step-by-step uh, -step direction with um, the explanation of each step. Um, this way, a person can basically go from A to Z in the process, step-by-step, -step, and, and be able to do it, uh, whatever they're needing to be done on their own. Um, we also try and include at the beginning a purpose to tell why we do what we do with that process and a little bit of explanation about what it is in case someone's not exactly familiar with that process. So it gives a better understanding um, from there on out if they, they need to do that again, what they're doing and, and why, why they are doing it and how to do it. Um, and again, obviously, as you can see, it does take some time to put these guides together, but once you have them um, in, in the system and in, in the drive, it's so much easier to maintain and it's there and it's, anybody can access it who needs it. But anytime we have to make a change, whether it's um, something that we've, we've decided to change to the process or even a release that student manager has that may have made the process easier or better, uh, we go in and uh, we update the guide or the process and uh, on the, the share drive so everybody can see the changes. And it's, then it's usually communicated to everyone that the process has been updated. Um, and we also, you know, put who did the updates. So if there's any questions, that person can be notified or can be asked, um, you know, why they did what they did or, or if there were any questions about it. The common data requirements folder um, is very important. It contains common data that all employees are, are going to need, um, especially for our our day to day processes. Um, as you can see down here, we've got several different folders uh, about our codes, our course codes, zip codes, SOC codes. All these things are important for reporting, so it's very um, you know, important that the people who are entering this data are entering it the correct way. Um, so we, this is obviously something we point out when someone comes on board is that make sure that the data that you're entering is consistent and then here's how do you enter, enter the data and here's how we do our coding, things like that. Um, one thing I think I missed, uh, I missed talking about was um, oh, that well, I see it on here now. But we have every month we have a training coordinator meeting, and then we also have a student manager meeting. Um, and this is specifically for discussing student manager issues and training coordinator issues and, and processes and uh, procedures, anything that's going on that you know needs to be updated or looked at. Uh, we try and do this every month, the first, I think it's the first Wednesday of every month, um, so that anybody uh, who has questions or maybe uh, is not 100% sure, they're in a room with um, other users who use the, the system on a daily basis that can help them. Uh, from time to time, we have training sessions during this time where we, uh, everybody brings their laptop in and we go over a specific procedure to make sure everyone is doing it correctly. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, because we move at such a fast pace in our um, division, um, we don't get a break over the summer. Our classes run constantly and, you know, we, we project, or we project a year out in some cases for classes but we work at least three months ahead filling up classes and it's a continual uh, thing from day to day. 
Um, so we don't have a lot of time to to stop what we're doing and, and spend a lot of time training people who have already been trained. Uh, again, we definitely spend time with them when they first come on. But these SOPs are great because it gives all new hires that, uh, you know, something to fall back on um, if they forget how to, to clone a course or do a group registration or, or things like that. They can find those answers in those guides um, if they know how, you know, know how to look for, uh, to find it and know what they're looking for. Um, again, we've had some, in some cases, you know, new procedures have been implemented. So we create new guides for that procedure. Um, we put it in the shared drive. And then, you know, we usually try, when we go, we are, when we are um, having our meetings a month, during each month, we talk about the new procedures, um, make sure everybody has a good grasp on it. Then again, if we need to pull up, pull out our laptops, we'll go through it step by step with each other. Um, I personally have gotten great use out of the SOPs since I've been at Tri County Tech and use them still quite often, even though I'm the author of, of some of them. Um, it's been great for our division. I think it creates cohesiency and um, obviously consistency in entering data. And again, it's so helpful for if somebody has to be out for an extended period of time that somebody else can step in. We had a lady who had gotten sick and had to be out for several months. Um, and her division, you know, again, it was a little bit different from the others, but we had everybody who could to chip in and help get her students registered and um, help with getting the rosters to the instructors and printing the certificates and billing and all that stuff because we even though the classes were different and the programs were different we all knew how to do it because we all had the guides so i know i've run through uh, that kind of quickly um, it's it's not hard once you get the standard operating procedures guide guides built the hardest part is building them in the beginning and it's going to take getting a team together and organization determining what you want to have in the guides what's going to be the most used procedures um, what's going to be the most beneficial to your division and um, getting together an efficient team that could that you can count on that you can trust that will come up with a plan to to get the procedures put down on paper and, and saved and um, implemented as well as sent out to everybody in the division. So does anybody have any questions? Very good, very good. I'm gonna pull you back up on the webcam okay. while we do these questions here. We have had a few questions. We have somebody in Montana who's asking, do you have standard operating procedures for every position? Um, every position that uses student manager, yes. Okay. The question I have, um, do you have multiple authors for this? Does everybody have right access to go in and do that? Talk, talk about kind of how you keep the consistency and keep that a solid document. We try and um, keep that limited to maybe level six users are people who are the most familiar with student manager. Um, we want to make sure the language that they're using is going to be um, consistent and something that the users are going to understand. So there's about three or four of us that will actually make changes. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Boy, getting this started, you must have a lot of administrative support on keeping this type of documentation. Talk a little bit about your administrators and how they support that process. We have got one program manager who is just a rock star with student manager. And uh, she she just took it upon herself and, and worked with other a couple others to get the ball rolling on this and 
good thing is she's very organized and so uh she kind of you know gave everybody duties as to what they should do you know obviously a program manager may not do the same duties as a training coordinator every every day so you would ask the training coordinator how do you do this how do you clone the course um you know write down the procedures um and then compiled everything compared it and made sure it was correct and put it all together from there on it would be a you know the maintaining is much easier than than getting it off the ground for sure exactly i'm looking folks keep send in your questions in while those are coming in i'm going to i've had several questions from folks wondering if we have a template that you can use and so i'm going to show you where to find that i'll have to pull over a screen here hopefully no, i don't think everybody's seeing that yet okay you're seeing you seeing it now okay you should be seeing the conference site no There I am. Okay, I'm trying to get all these controls and things out of the way. On our website in, in the customer area, you want to explore that if you're new, that there's a lot of resources in our student manager resources here. And if you go to these guides, manuals, and white papers, you're going to see a number of resources available to you, and you can see our standard operating procedures is right here. Now, if you this is locked, that means you need some credentials to get into that. And if you're a current um, A-Square user and you have a current support and maintenance agreement, we can send you those credentials. Just, just send me an email or your tech and they can give you those credentials and you can download that. Of course, you're going to want to revise it and make it your own, um, but it gives you a starting point of some things to think about and then get together with your team and, and you can make that personalized to you. So oh, that's where you can find that. Chuck, are you seeing other questions here? Let me take a look. Well, and I'm just kind of thinking here as I'm, I'm listening to Amy, and I realize that um, we, you could build these in like a Google Docs or, or something on the cloud. That way you're not using uh, campus resources, although I think some ITs would uh, – uh, not like uh, Google Cloud, but, uh, but you know, there, there's yeah. definitely uh, uh, cloud storage options you could do with these instead. Right. It's a very good idea as well. Mm -hmm. um, this is Chuck. Amy, a great job. Great job. Um, a question Thank for you. you. Um, have you have tried, am I getting loop or can you hear me okay? We hear you fine. We're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, have uh, you tried or had occasion to be able to link from one of your SOP docs to the online help guide that already exists in ACEWARE where maybe it's a more generic process and not unique to your campus? Or have you, have you haven't done that yet? No. Yeah. Um, again, I'm trying to think um, embedding links within uh, the SOP documents here, you can actually probably hot link into mm -hmm. the help guide. And uh, Jason uh, is is our author on that and could tell you, but anyway, that's something, again, as you're moving forward or some of the new features, for instance, that Matthew was showing off this morning, if you wanted to highlight them once they get uh, put into the help guide. So, but yeah, sure. that's quite, quite thorough and, uh, Again, you've got uh, a, a well-organized system. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, one of the questions I'm surprised that didn't get asked is, is how much is it? Can we buy? Can we, can we rent it? Buy it? Can we, <laughs> can we steal it? Uh, um, yeah, some of that is obviously internal and proprietary. But I'm wondering if it would be helpful, and, and Sharon or Amy, to even just kind of do a outline of kind of a uh, map of how you organize the, your 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 tables and whether or not you right. do that again in a in a server based or it could be done on a, on a cloud mode but just kind of a structural outline of kind of a table of contents maybe that's what I'm trying to say right well that and and going back to one of the slides I, I don't 
have it up anymore, but um, where we have all the documents shared, like all the training coordinator documents started with like TC and all the CRC documents started with CRC. And, you know, we tried to make it, um, first of all, concise because we know those titles take up space on the server. But so, you know, a, t a training coordinator wouldn't get confused at cloning a course, um, you know, if they happen to be in the wrong folder for whatever reason. We wanted to make sure that it would, they could, they knew where to go exactly and that the title of the document had that TC in it so they knew it was, you know, related specifically to their duties. Very good. What does one of your um, ACEWARE or student manager staff meetings look like? Can I walk us through what an agenda is like for that? I know I've sat in on some of those, so. It's sure a little bit, bit, yeah, it's a little bit different month to month. Can, you know, it just depends on uh, if we have issues come up. We try and do, um, we have staff meetings every other Monday, um, which has in our entire staff in it. And then we break down into the student manager and training coordinator meetings, um, usually the first Wednesday of every month. And we, we have the two meetings, the student manager and the training coordinator meeting back to back. So we spend two hours at the beginning of every month going through um, issues that have popped up. Um, like um, we had some billing issues back um, a while back, and I'm sure Matthew knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and, and it wasn't necessarily ACEWARE. I think it was our institution was changing over to a new um, billing platform. Um, and, you know, so anytime things change and we have, um, you know, something coming up, we want all of those users who are hands on getting their hands dirty with student manager every day to sit down together and talk about, um, you know, what's going on, what issues are you running into, especially when it gets time for reporting. Um, we, we, you know, we want them to go ahead and start getting their data together if they haven't report, if they haven't entered the credentials for the student, go ahead and be doing that, um, you know, because at certain times of the year, we have certain reports that are due. And, and so, you know, our meetings, it basically anybody can add to the agenda that they want to add. Um, but, you know, we, we certainly, we will revisit something. Maybe we haven't talked about it in a while, a process that's been maybe neglected or, you know, whatever. It just depends on, on the month. And when we get back, golly, you know, there's no telling what we're gonna have to talk about when we finally get back on campus, you know, from everything that's happened since we've been on quarantine. Um, but the main thing is keeping it consistent and doing it every month. And some months we get in there and it's like, mm, we really don't have that much, but we want to keep meeting uh, because you always find something to talk about, um, you know, whether it's, you know, a problem with student manager or something good that we found with student manager. So the main thing is keeping it consistent and making sure everybody's in those meetings that need to be in those meetings because, um, you know, the users, the ones that are working with it every day, they're the ones that need to, to be in communication um, regularly. Very good. Chuck, do you have any other questions or? Uh, I, I would, Amy, okay. I'd like to bug you for one more time. Uh, sure. And that is the monthly webinars uh, that are regularly scheduled or announced. Do you let staff kind of self-select or uh, if you are one of the training coordinators sees a topic, they say, you know, that'd be really good for Joe. Mm -hmm. Is there an attempt to really try to say, hey, Joe, this mm -hmm. sounds like it'd really be good for you? Right. Kind of a proactive uh, encouragement mm -hmm. to sign up. As operations manager, I try and be the one to um, make sure that they see those announcements. I mean, you know, we get so many emails, you need so many newsletters and things, and I always try and pay attention specifically to to those um, those emails because I, I see something just about every month that I think could help somebody. Um, and if I can't attend, I'll say, so-and-so, you may want to attend this, it might be good for you, whether it's, you know, whatever it is. So, um, 
I think just about all of our employees who use student manager get those, but I don't think they all really read them like they should. So I definitely try and point out things that I think would be helpful for them if I see it. Very good, Amy, thank you. I don't see anything else right now. I, again, I would just uh, encourage folks, if you want to download that um, SOP doc to shoot a note to Sharon or I, and we'll send you the credentials. So um, excellent job, Amy. Great to have you on board. Amy, thanks thank for you. letting us join you at home for, thank for this thank session. You. If other questions come up, we'll certainly send you a note. Sure. Um, I would need, go ahead. And I've got my uh, contact information on the last slide. Uh, anyone can feel free to contact me with any questions. Appreciate that. I want to give a shout out to Jordan Clark from Metropolitan Community College in Nebraska. We'll be sending you something for some leisure reading. You'll hear from Susan. She'll get your home office address. And we're going to give everybody a break, and we'll see you back here at 3 o'clock Central Time for What's New in ACEWeb with Jason and Stein. Thank you again, Amy. We appreciate having Thanks. you with us today. Thank Bye, you. everyone. See you in just a little bit. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.